crop production cost at record highs, you must get the most out of every bag of seed, every jug of crop production products, every tank of fuel. It's essential that you adopt precision agriculture technology to get the highest return out of the money you spend to make a crop. Hi, I'm Alabama Cooperative Extension System Specialist Mark Hall. Our teacher is Dr. John Fulton. John is Associate Biosystems Engineering Professor and Extension Specialist at Auburn University. He's the leader of the Extension Agronomy Team. John has recently been named the Alpha Eminent Scholar and the Precision Agriculture Educator of the Year. John's most important qualification is he's easy to work with and he's an in-the-field, get-it-done guy. Dr. John Fulton. John, thank you so much for coming and telling us about precision agriculture today. I mean, it's imperative with costs are skyrocketing for farmers. A bag of corn seed is $500 plus. And these chemicals, I went and bought a jug of fungicide to put on the trial. It was, it was $425 for two gallons of a fungicide. And I mean, costs are, to say they're skyrocketing is an understatement. They are through the roof and then. Talk and to us. Mark, thanks for having me today, but I think that's a uh, great segue into to what farmers are going to have to deal with today and in the near future about managing costs, uh, and uh, we call that input stewardship. And uh, how, do we, how do we manage our inputs to retain our profitability, but keep ourselves in business? I mean, we're talking about farming as a business today, and anything that we can do uh, to help them here within our extension system and reach out and give them the tools and information to, to better manage those inputs is going to help our, our Alabama farmers move forward into the future. John, I don't think, I don't think we have a, a better tool in precision agriculture. Without a doubt, you know, we've been at this uh, for nearly 20 years now, the, the introduction of what we call now precision ag, uh, and as, we, as we've kind of matured, and uh, we have all this technology, in some cases the technology standard on equipment and taking advantage of that, uh, but also as we move forward is, is collecting some of this data and, and start to utilize that to, to make decisions, help to make more informed decisions uh, is, is going to be important because uh, I don't see uh, commodity prices rebounding like we were a few years ago, but uh, as you mentioned, when we think about seed and, and some of these uh, especially crop protection uh, uh, products, uh, the trend is uh, it's ever increasing. Um, we're putting a lot of uh, research and development into these technologies, uh, seed and, and crop protection, and, and we're just going to have to manage them to our best of our ability, and technology and ultimately some of this data is going to help us make the right decision for my business operation. Give us just the short version as in not too long <laughs> of Precision Ag. John, let's, let's look at your your slides here. So most people, and, and a lot of times, we've done a great job the last 15, 20 years talking about precision ag and really relating that to technology, but it's really much more than that. It's, it's looking at your farm business operation and looking at the system itself and really look at the goal of trying to optimize returns to not only our inputs, as we talked about before, but preserving resources. You know, it's ever important today to consider the environment, now we're in the sustainability movement as, as we move forward and knowing how to best, how this all fits together, the technology and the data fits into all those and it allows the, even the public to better understand what, uh, how we're doing things. You know, the public relates to technology. They understand that. Yes. It's basically at the younger generation. And so there's more to it than just technology. It's, it's how does I take this tool and really utilize it within my farming operation to to make the best decisions and, and make sure that we're doing the right thing at the right place at the right time. So some other things that you know we're going to talk about during this series is you know it really was the early 90s <clears throat> the availability of GPS that really kind of broke out and allow precision ag to evolve and that's kind of what's brought us here today is the whole idea that the global positioning system um, being available to civilians, pinpointing our position here on Earth, and all of a sudden now we can put it on our equipment, our tractors, and harvesters, and start to do some Is this the same technology things. that the Garmin in my car is that, that you hit the home button and it, wherever you are to carry you home? Absolutely. 
The same technology. Same technology, the same technology that's in, you know, our tablets and iPads today and our smartphones. And it's, you know, it's uh, allowing us to pinpoint our position but also attach data and, and do some things, automate machinery uh, to, to uh, drive itself as we know it today. So GPS is really the, the key uh, technology that's allowed us uh, to evolve and, and bring us to what we're talking about today. When we think about precision ag, we really are talking about trying to manage that variability. You can see in this particular uh, image, not only an irrigated portion, but also a non-irrigated mm -hmm. or dry land portion. But you can just see that there's a lot of variability. But in, in the terms of managing that, what we're really thinking about variability is those three key aspects. Can we measure that? Can we an analyze, which really brings that understanding piece in, and once we under start to understand it or think about that, how do we bring that back and start managing? And that's that technology piece of being able to, to traverse that field and, and change our inputs or our rates, uh, possibly as an example, to, to address that variability. We think also, especially here in the southeast, uh, thinking about the field conditions, we got a lot of irregular shaped fields, we got a lot of small fields, we got some big fields, we got varying terrain, um, we got varying uh, soil types and textures, we even moved from north to south Alabama, and then we got a, a large segment, a lot of variability in crops that would grow down yes. here. And then all of a sudden we bring that environmental piece in and we got uh, conservation structures, grass waterways, buffers, and how do we manage and, and not ensure that we're not getting runoff or off-site transport of either chemicals or nutrients today. And so bringing all that together, the, the technology is really an enabler uh, to, to address these variabilities, uh, in-field variability that we have. We think about all these technologies, this is just an example of list that we're going to talk about. But as, as on the forefront, we're automating machine functions, uh, anything from using guidance. But today we talk about uh, robots being in the near future. Yeah. We talk about unmanned automated um, systems flying out there to collect data. There's, so there's a lot of technology and that, and that automation piece is a real key. So these are just some of the things that we'll talk about in this uh, educational series. But we bring that back and I kind of bring it into, there's really three categories that I think farmers and, and even crop consultants, you know, the first one's kind of obvious, can I, can I save, you know, that cost management tool. But at the same time, we're thinking about best management technologies. How do I be most efficient, not only with my machinery, but my inputs uh, and bringing that environmental and sustainability aspect in into that as well. But the, ultimately, at the end of the day, we've got to have some risk management tools because we know Mark is, each year is a new year, mm -hmm. and uh, as a scientist, we want to have um, replication, but it's pretty hard to replicate a, yeah. a growing season. So every season is unique, and, and how, do we, how do we manage that? So when we think about production decisions, loans, insurance, all that's blending in today and in, into this whole system. So with that, we talk about some of the savings. These are really that, that cost management piece about guidance. We talk about variable rate, what it can bring automatic section control, there's a lot of potential just to get those tools in place and, and have some immediate savings back to the farm. Uh, but the unique thing is, is it's just not all about savings. And as we work through our surveys over the years, you know, the number one thing uh, that, that we've learned from our farm community is that uh, that quality of life. You know, I don't have to spend 15 hours concentrating on driving that machine accurately down rows or in some cases at the, without rows you know, I'm a little bit less tired, less fatigued, as an example, and, and happier at the end of the day. And then the other thing that, that you hear a lot of comment about is, once I got the technology, I'll never go back. Yeah. We know that there's a lot of interest, and this is an example of a 2010 survey that we did among uh, across the state with our Alabama farmers, and you'll notice that in some categories there's pretty high level adoption. But I think when you look at the overall, there's uh, the, the – there's a lot of interest in trying to figure out what's going to be best suited for my operation and how that's going to fit in. And so we got that high level of interest. And today, uh, through various programs, we know about 70% of the, the cropland in Alabama is, is touched by some piece of technology or precision ag uh, today. So that just shows you where the future is. That number's not going to decrease, as we talked about in the prior slide. It's just going to be 
the tool or a tool in the toolbox that's really going to allow us to, to push forward and retain profitability and, and make sure Alabama Ag is at the forefront, uh, not only today, but into the future. So with that, you know, we talked about GPS, and we're going to get into this, what is GNSS? We're t you know, it's just not GPS today, but we're really focused on machine automation. We're talking about using these uh, technology to generate data, which ultimately can be analyzed and brought back to the farm to help us make decisions or that farmer make decisions, but it's also that stewardship part, using only what's needed out there and showing the public that value of how this technology really blends in and, and making sure that we have safe food, we have secure food, but yet we're, we're meeting the production demands out there for the world population to feed them in the future. And then finally, we'll leave on this, but this idea of really we're starting to drive down with some of the very uh, uh, research and some of the technology, we're, we're starting to think about this plant by plant management that's not too far uh, out in the future. So, well, it's exciting to me, John. And uh, we used to think about square foot gardening, where you'd have just every every inch, you know, get the most from it. Well, we're square foot gardening on thousands of acres of cropland. That it's just what does this this area instead of going field or even acre, it's by the square foot. John, we're, we're doing a, a eight part course. If you want, to, if you if you're interested in doing this, you can go to www.auburn.edu slash precision ag and it'll tell you how to enroll in this uh, eight part course on precision agriculture. John, you're going to be our instructor and we'll get into a whole lot more detail on like yield monitor. Man, that, that has, has been a boon to my world on looking at, at what different practices, how they yield, whether spraying or, or varieties or anything. Man, you can tell the difference. And so, uh, if you're interested and want more information on precision agriculture, go to www.auburn.edu slash precision ag. Thank you so much, John. Anytime we can help you folks with anything, we're here to serve you. The Alabama Cooperative Extension System is a wonderful organization to work for. We're here to help the, the citizens of Alabama.